What's up guys? We're back in Bash and today I'll be showing you how to read user input in your shell scripts. User input is a very important part of any type of programming or scripting. It makes the scripts much more dynamic because instead of a script just running and doing what it does, our user input can have an effect on the script and create different output based on our input or possibly even branch off and take different actions with flow control, which we'll discuss later in another video. So let's get right into the implementation. In bash, our command to read input from the user is just read. Very easy to remember. And of course, since we are reading input from the user, we have to store that input in a variable. So here, name is the variable that we're going to be storing our user input. And then of course, down here, we're going to show you that it was stored by echoing that name back into our terminal. Now, currently, this script isn't a very good design because if I come over here and try to run it, it seems like it just sits there, and this would be pretty confusing to an end user. They'd probably think that the script lagged out or something, but it didn't actually lag out. So anytime that you need to take some type of input from a user, it's always a good idea to first have an echo command that tells the user what type of input you want. So up here, I'm gonna say echo, enter your name, and now if I run this script, you'll see it makes a whole lot more sense. Enter your name, Kenny. Your name is Kenny. Now we can also take multiple, um, we can take multiple inputs from the user. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll say enter your names and then we'll come down here and our first variable, we're going to make it name one. And you can have all of these variables on the same line. You just have to separate them with a white space. So we'll say read name one, name two, and name three. And then down here, oh, your names is, that is not grammatically correct. We'll say your names are, and then same thing down here, we have to separate each of these variables with a white space. So we'll do name one, name two, name three. And then if I come over here and run the script, it's gonna ask us to enter our names. We'll say Kenny, Ryan, Darius. And then here it's going to output all of those names, Kenny, Ryan, and Darius. Now, so far, we have been taking our input on a new line from where it is asking us to enter our names. Well, there's actually a way that we can combine both of these lines, this echo where it asks to enter our names and where it reads all of our names off. And we can do this with the P switch. And yes, uh, read has switches, just like most other bash commands. We can see what all of these switches are with the help switch. And you'll see P, prompt, output, the string, without trailing new line before attempting to read. So I'll go ahead and show you how to format that. For now, we can get rid of this by commenting it out, and we'll do read P, and then we can say, enter your names. And then you'll see that since I commented this out, this uh, line doesn't even really apply to our script. It's really only reading these last two lines. And I'll go ahead and show it to you here. Enter your names. We'll do Kenny, Ryan, and Darius. Now, Anytime you're going to do something like that, I actually forgot to do it here. I always find it's a good idea to just separate it with a white space just so that things don't blend together like the word names and Kenny here. You obviously don't have to do this, but it just looks better in your terminal when you output it. See, enter your names, Kenny, Ryan, Darius. Looks much better when we do it that way. Now, this is only one of the ways 
that we can get multiple inputs from the user. Another way that we can do it, and in my opinion, a much better way when you have multiple inputs, like more than three, is to just store things as an array. Because imagine if we had to take 10 names from our user. We would have to write in our script name one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10, and then we'd have to do that again. And that's just very verbose and it doesn't look very good. So let me go ahead and show you how we can read our input as an array. So we got to replace this P switch with an A switch. And we'll get rid of this part here. And we will bring this part back into your names. And we'll get rid of all of this and just replace it with the variable names. And then down here, let's do, there we go. So we need to format it as an array. So we'll do dollar sign, curly brace, names, square brace, at sign, and the other curly brace. All right, so let me explain what's going on here. So here we're taking the input names, which is actually an array. Bash doesn't really know that it's an array just yet, but down here we go ahead and we let it know that it's an array by using these curly braces and then by using this square bracket to specify what position of the array that we want because an array is sort of like a variable that stores multiple variables inside of it. And you can refer to any one of those individual strings inside of your array by specifying the number here inside of the square brackets. So if we only wanted to output the first item in our array, we would replace this with a zero. If we wanted to print out the second item in our array, we'd replace this with a one. If we wanted the third item, we'd do it with a two, and so on and so forth. And arrays, they just start at zero, like many other type of data structures and programming. Typically, things will start at zero. Now, the reason that I have an at sign here is because in Bash, if you want to just output your entire array instead of just putting, you know, item zero or item one, you would just put in the at sign, and that's going to output all items here of your array. So let's go ahead and write this, and then I'll demonstrate it for you guys here. So enter your names. Well, let's enter a bunch of names this time. Let's do Kenny, Jacob, Ryan, Darius, Kimberly, Marlena, Dennis, John, Bucky, Brad, don't want commas, Brandon, just a whole bunch of different names. And then you see, it will output all of these different names here. And we didn't have to use all of this very verbose text by putting a bunch of individual things here. And just to demonstrate to you guys what a single part of it would look like, we'll just replace this with a two. We'll write it. And then we'll do Kenny, Ryan, Darius. And you see that it just outputs Darius because that is our third item of the array or position two. Now the next command switch that I want to show you for read is the silent switch. What the silent switch will do is when you're putting in your input in the terminal here, it will not show you the text on the screen as you're typing it because as you saw here when I entered my names, 
it shows everything that's here. But if I was entering some sensitive information, like say a password or a social security number, you probably don't want that to output onto the screen because somebody could look over your shoulder and then see what your password or your social security number is. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you now. We'll replace this with S. And let's just get rid of this here. And of course, normally you wouldn't output it, but I'm just going to output it for the sake of this video to show you that it did indeed capture my input. And we'll say read password and enter your password. So we'll write this and then when I go to write it, you see when I type my super duper secure password, it doesn't actually show you anything there. But if I hit enter, you can see that indeed, it did say that, oh, that should say password. <laughs> my password is password one, two, three, four, five. Super duper secure, don't try to hack me. And finally, I'm going to show you the T-switch. Now, what the T-switch does is it gives us a certain amount of time before the command will time out. So say if you wanted to take input from the user, but maybe you don't want to wait all day and maybe the input isn't something that's terribly important, you can just give the user a certain amount of time to put in their input and then if they fail to do it, it's just going to skip past them and it is measured in seconds. So what this is asking here is it's going to read the password variable from our user, but it's only gonna give us a time of five seconds to enter it. And let's go ahead and fix this here. Your password is. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this for you guys now. So we'll do user input, and you see we can start typing it, but if we don't hit enter, it's going to just skip past and it's gonna go on to the next part in our script. Well guys, this has been the read command. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like on this video and share it with a friend or a colleague who you think might find it useful.